Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of StarCrafting. I am back. I'm happy to see you. It's been so long. It's been about three weeks since I've even looked at StarCraft, and I'm a little bit sad. So, today's game is between Murs, the Red Terran in the bottom left, and his opponent, TT1, a very talented Protoss in the top right. And, uh, turn my sound up a bit, because I can't hear a thing. And there we go. There we go. So yeah, no, I'm pretty excited for this game. I have not cast StarCraft in a while, and I know that that is upsetting to some of you guys, but don't fret. I'm finished moving. That was the reason I wasn't casting, was because I was painting walls and tearing down drywall and repairing drywall and tearing up flooring and, you know, all that jazz, buying your toilet seats and shower heads and all that ball back. So there's a lot of stuff that went on. I am here again. Despite the fact that university is starting, my uh, my schedule is actually really good. Ah, oh, God. Okay. That's great. So, anyway, getting messages from my roommates. <laughs> He's an asshole. Anyway. So, yes, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, no, I'm back on a regular schedule now. Not so much regular, but I will be consistent. Fuck, that's the same thing. <laughs> I will be posting more regularly. More, more constantly, um, more often. That's there. There, we're settling them more often. Anyway, so we are seeing a uh, a reactor here from from the Terran player, and I, I missed it. But the Protoss player actually did scout that reactor, so he knows what's going on. He got that double gas, and that's how he's going to react. He's going to get some stalkers and some sentry. Um, the stalkers will be able to outrange the Marines if they try to cross the map without stim. And it'll be really easy to kill them if they don't have marine shield, which they won't be getting, seeing as how there is no tech labs. That reactor does fly on to a factory and will start producing lots of Hellions. Two come out and two are instantly on the way after that. And following it with a starport, this is looking like a scary 1-1-1 build. Um, Hellions make zealots really useless when they start to hit mass numbers. And uh, the marines kind of deal with everything else, so yeah. We are going to see lots of sentry coming out. Um, it looks like we're going to see a three gate expand. That is what we see. Um, and I believe that that was scouted, judging by the mini map, by MERS as well. No. No, not scouted. Wow, okay. I thought I saw an SCV over here scouting, but I did not. So a stalker just kind of trying to keep some map control. Not even going to see that SCV. Maybe he did. He did. He's going to go back and he's going to deal with it. Killing it on the tower, that will be a free kill. And uh, just more marines and more aliens being produced. Nothing fancy. However, we are now seeing a medevac. And what that means for the Protoss player is that he won't be able to just force field this ramp like normal. Because um, the Terran player will have high ground view. Also, if the Terran player wants to, he can kind of attack this nexus. As well as drop the main and uh, cause some two-pronged damage. And very wise decision by the Protoss player. Pulling that stalker back, although it looks like the Hellions are going to catch up to it. Will they be able to kill it? It looks like they should be able to four-shot it, maybe five-shot it, but no, they don't get it. They get back safely to the top of the ramp. There are so many Hellions on the field. Bunch of stalkers here now. Force field very well placed at the bottom, keeping them at maximum distance. And uh, this is going to be really interesting, guys. In the new patch, blue flame Hellion damage going from 10 to 5 which is a huge slap in the face for pyromaniacs everywhere. However, um, the infestors got a wicked nerf too. They can no longer neural parasite massive units, and I know none of these players are Zerg, but that means a lot for both Terran and Protoss. Colossus can't be taken, Thor can't be taken, Battlecruisers can't be taken, Carriers can't be taken, and uh, that makes me a happy camper. However, we'll see what the Zerg think about that. I know it's not gonna be a, a fun time in the QQ forums, so the Terran player wisely backing off because there is a Robo Bay here. If a Warp Prism happens to come out, then he could cause some serious damage to the Terran player by uh, by way of drop. And so half his army is trying to contain the Protoss player. One force field goes down, not enough to contain anything. They come back to do some damage to the Zealots and ooh, losing two Hellions for it. So anyway, what was I going to say? Oh yes. Pulling back half his army to defend his base and still trying to contain with the Hellions. So, in any sense, um, there is a command center being built in his base, so safe up there, at the same time as two bunkers being produced. So, 
the Terran player will have his expansion up before TT1 will. And over here it goes. Awesome. Oh, look, look, look. Oh, Hellions do scout that expansion. They know it's done. I was uh, scratching my wrist when that happened. And I, uh, I need both hands for that, by the way. Anyway, so I could not get up here with the mouse in time to see what the Hellions did, but it looks like they just backed off. They didn't even take a shot at it, which, you know, I understand. You're, you're a lowly Hellion. You're not going to do too much damage with that splash damage. Especially after the nerf. Huh, kicking the crotch. Anyway. Ooh, loading up some Hellions in the medevac. Going to come up the right-hand side. <clears throat> but, I mean, as a Protoss player, you just kind of expect that shit. And it looks like TT1 does as well. He is a very fantastic Protoss player. If you guys do not know him, very smart and very forethought. Sorry, very forethought. A lot of forethought goes into his play. And uh, he's just kind of dancing around, sweeping his base for any kind of drops. And uh, there will be one coming up here. And he's in position to deal with it. And uh, the rest of his army is down here. He needs control of these towers, though. He absolutely needs that, because if his half of his army gets caught at the bottom of the ramp while a Terran comes up with a large army, that is bad news bears. Gonna go over here and force back the Hellions. And it looks like the Medivacs are just gonna come over here. He's gonna unload, and those Hellions are gonna do their own thing. Oh, can they get up? No! But what he does see is a Colossus and uh, uh, wow, instantly cancels the two medevacs that were in here and start building two vikings. We have marine shield on the way, which is about time. Um, does he have stem now? He does have stem now. And uh, building a second starport. And I can only imagine it's to uh, increase the amount of vikings he can build at once. Now, if he's, I think a good, hold on. <laughs> God. Ah, ah. I think a good choice for him would be Banshees, um, but that being said, I'm not a Terran player, I just know what kills me hard. Banshee Ghost is uh, pretty scary against Protoss, you can do a lot of things with that, it gives you a lot of options, get a few siege tanks in there, and uh, it just becomes a wicked positional battle. Seeing as how siege tanks outrange those Colossus, you don't need too many Vikings, and when they're out of position, the Banshees do their job, man. Tell you that. Anyway, let's let Murs play this game how he wants. We have two Colossus on the field, um, but in terms of unit count, how many Vikings do we have? We have four Vikings, so we have two Vikings to every Colossus, and that will exponentially grow. We've got this medevac just barely escaping a squad of stalkers. I think Murs did, in fact, though. No, we didn't see that proxy pile, on, so that's pretty big. Scouty Probe goes down to the bunker, which isn't a big deal at all. Oh no, the Protoss army leaves the natural, and Hellions gonna get in here, gonna kill two. Looks like, see, see, we got eight kills, eight, nine worker kills. Force fields going down, beautiful force fields by the Protoss player, denying any escape from those Hellions. And the uh, Colossus will break the force fields and allow his units to flow out. And there we go, what an excellent play by TT1. Um, good decision from uh, Murs to do that attack, however, it just didn't work out like he wanted it to. Nine probe kills, that was pretty awesome, but he lost a lot of Hellions doing so. If those Hellions got out alive, now we're talking, but they didn't. And, you know, those, those suckers cost 200 apiece. So, yeah, that's what they cost, right? 100 apiece. Huh. Oh, jeez. They cost 100 apiece. I lied to you, and I'm retarded. So, um, he lost like six of them, so that's 600 minerals down the shitter for nine probes, which are 50 each, which, you know, just doesn't add up. So anyway, we're coming up here with a big ball of Terran, a big ball of badassery up the middle of the map, and a Nexus is going down for the Protoss player. Oh, long distance sniping the Colossus over this gap where the Stalkers can't do a thing about it. Zealot charges on the way as well as weapons one for the Protoss, which really will benefit those Colossus. It will also help the Stalkers shoot down those Vikings faster. Um, it's a very odd decision for the t Protoss player though, as Protoss very often tends to get um, armor versus the Terran bio build. We are seeing a command center float through the air, probably going to come take this gold. 
And yes, that's what we're seeing. Two missile turrets going down. They will stop DT harass. They will also stop Colossus that get too close without killing those missile turrets. Extra DPS on Colossus is always a good thing if you are a Terran player. If you're a Protoss player, that's not always a good thing because it's probably your Colossus. Anyway, so that was actually only one missile turret. One was a sensor tower, and that is really annoying for the Protoss player. He cannot go anywhere without the Terran player. With, yeah, the Terran player annoying. Oh, we look like three Vikings. Um, he brought his Colossus with him though, which is kind of silly. Um, he just got a lot of Viking kills. And uh, that Col that Colossus did not die, which is a big deal. And what do we see here? Not much going on right now. They're both just trying to sit back and get these bases secured. They'd rather get their base going than kill each other's army at this point. Um, both just kind of playing defensive and careful. And uh, the sort of player will move forward. Uh, but no, he just holds back. There's a lot of shit here. Holy cow, what an army. Focus firing down that damaged Viking. Good shot, good mouse accuracy. I have to say, two more Vikings joining the fray. We are building four Vikings at a time. So, you know, picking off a Viking here and there is not really doing much. However, you know, it keeps his numbers low as when he lands those, they will be DPS on the ground. Anybody else think the Vikings look like the fighters from Star Wars? The ones that grapple hook the big walkers? I do. Yeah, <laughs> I does. They really look like that to me. You know, just saying. Just saying. Anyway, so, we will come in here and we will engage. Um, this is a pretty good engagement for the, Terran, for the Protoss player at this point. Um, as he does have his unit composition set up properly. Zealots in front, Stalkers in back, Gloss is kind of mishmashed in. He needs his Archons up front, and the Terran player wisely backs up into this wedge, as his units will fight better in a choke than the Protoss players will. And, uh, oh dear god. Oh, uh, Vikings, gonna kill Colossus. It's like a barbecue for them. They just fucking love that shit. Oh, come here, come here, Colossus, come here. I want to kill you. I want to kill I'm going to kill you. I can see I'm going to kill Force Field in the narrow choke to stop the Terran player from coming and saving his own base. Vikings getting freaking greedy, trying to get in there to kill those Colossus. They do kill all the Colossus, but all the Vikings go down to the Stalker as they force field out Terran units. Forcing the command center to lift off, killing a lot of the SCVs. Now we gotta look at this worker killed. 23 workers for the Terran player dead, and the Protoss player is responsible. Scan going down on this natural, trying to see what's up with the unit composition here and where it is positioned. A few ghosts going up ahead, gonna try to take out some, uh, some probes, but the cannon spots it and just murdered. Blood everywhere. That ghost, you know, he's had better assignments, that's all I'm saying. And there is enough for an EMP on that one ghost. You will see the Protoss player come up here and try to pick off some free medevacs. He gets one, and a small chunk of the Terran army is by itself. We are getting some free kills here. Vikings getting off the ground, because that's where they are. And the Protoss player will push in to engage. Oh, that is a bad spot. The Protoss player is being too indecisive. He's losing a lot of units for free. And uh, is not doing any damage back. Uh, one force field not enough, as I think EMP cleaned up a lot of energy on those sentries. Um, but the, Terran, the Protoss player gets out with a lot of his units. He's not doing terribly. The Terran player still has a large ball as well. Not many Vikings in his unit composition, though. He's building a bunch more, as the Protoss player is now building another Colossus, which wasn't the case before. He had halted Colossus production entirely, but now that the Viking count is extremely low, um, he can start doing that again. So, a couple more Vikings joining the unit comp. There are a lot of Marauders, a lot of Marines, uh, quite a few Ghosts too as well. Um, three Ghosts on production. Storm on the way now, which I think needed to happen a long time ago. Um, we are seeing ground weapon or ground armored too. So Protoss being, I think, one one now. Yes, one one, and the Terran army being two one. There we go. Gonna come in here. Gonna squash this Marine, and yes, he dies. Getting control of the tower. Seeing what's up, knowing that the Vikings are ahead of themselves. Wow! Ooh, holy ball sack! Look at this from here down to here. Everything in there, no shields. Holy Jesus! That did 50 damage to every zealot. That did 80 damage to every stalker. Wow! And all the sentry in there lost their, their energy. So 
quite the shot with those EMPs. Very well placed. Um, Colossus, that one's pretty low health. Um, but this did reveal to the Terran player that there are Colossus back in the fray. He's got a couple Vikings, but not too many. Four more on the way. And uh, he may be overcommitting to the Viking count. Um, because once again, the Protoss player did stop building Colossus. Just that extra splash damage is what he wanted. Protoss player going the other way around, which is going to be huge. The Terran player is not in position to deal with this. And he is getting some free SCD kills. And he's going to back off now. No! Just fading the back off. Coming forward with his army, killing tons of SCVs. And the Vikings look like they're in a bad spot. No. They're going to back away. They we're going to be free kills. Oh, the Terran player coming up here. He will be able to rush in here and do a lot of damage. But, and the Protoss player's army is not set up like it needs to be. Spraying with EMPs and missing. He could come up here and focus the Nexus. No, he backed off. Why? He could have taken that Nexus. TP1 was ready to surrender the Nexus, but he did not. I think the Terran player decided that he was almost mind it and not worth committing to. But he is going to come down here. The Protoss player will be able to... No, both players are being so indecisive, which is so bad. The Terran player could have killed that Nexus. The Protoss player could have wedged the Terran down in there as the rocks up here have not been destroyed. Trying to engage over here. This is a terrible joke for the Protoss player. He should not engage here. As He's got a concave now, but it didn't start out that way. Now he's chasing the Terran player, losing that concave. will lose all his units if he does not back out. This is a terrible way to engage. Oh, but he does get a lot of those medivacs backing out with most of his stalkers. Look at how soft that Terran army is. If the Protoss player did not follow him through that choke, that fight would have been even more one-sided. But, you guys, always pay attention to your concaves. Always, always, always. The Protoss player, even though he came out ahead, he lost way more than he needed to. And this Terran player is just going to heal up with medevacs. And it's going to be like that fight never happens for those Terran units. So, he can't throw away units like that. As a Protoss player, you need to learn how to get... Just make your fights so one-sided. You have the power to do that. Um, you just need to uh, engage in the right spots. So we are seeing um, a couple Templars splitting off. A Zealot going in one direction. I don't know what's up. Um, we need to see some harass. We really need to see some harass. And from both players. Both players would really benefit from any kind of drop or warping in the Protoss player, player's situation. Curious as to what the plan is for those Templar. Storm actually got cancelled, I think. Or maybe the Storm research is done. I'm not really sure. But these Templar are going to come out here and show us. I think he's waiting for Storm. No, Storm is researched. We are going to see some Storm on the low ground. Storm going down on all those NCBs and the mules. And oh my goodness, so good. So good. So good, guys. My phone is ringing. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. That was my lady friend. She was on the telephone. Anyway, so the army is pushing up and not being as friendly as my lady friend. They are kicking some shit. This is a terrible place to engage once again for the Proto player. What a mistake! His army is evaporating. Let's look at okay, guys, 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 guys. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the way the Terran player is wrapped around the Protoss army. Look at that. All these units are shooting. Whereas only this amount of space right here for the Protoss player is even fighting back at this spot and over here this place all those units are just kind of running around in circles not able to do any damage not able to tank any damage this Colossus he's he's having a field day with the few units that are straggling behind but I mean really it's not a good engagement for the Protoss and you guys are gonna see very quickly what that means for the Protoss just get decimated absolutely decimated despite having Templar, despite warping Zealots in on the battlefield, it's just not going to go his way. This Colossus is doing a lot of damage as he's not taking any damage back in that corner. But look, here comes the Terran army, going to push forward, and that Colossus, oh, it just barely gets out of there. The Protoss player will lose his next TP1 rolling. It's kind of bad sportsmanship. I hope he's laughing at himself because that was his own fault. And, uh, no, this Colossus, no! Going the wrong way, what is he doing? Oh, the Terra player is going to turn around and snipe that. And there it goes down. And, uh, this is looking bad for the Protoss player. And no, GG, no, don't GG! Oh, you fool, oh, God. Look at this, Protoss player is still on a mining base. 
Terran player of mind out here. He's got an expansion, but he lost this one. This is the only one that had minerals. He's mined out at his natural and mined out at his main. The Protoss player is the only one with a mining base protected by two cannons. He's got tons of warp gates. He can warp in more units and defend this push. What is he doing? Why? Why did he GG? He had this game. Ah, oh, guys, I missed the Senate Carnum. I hope you missed me as much as I missed you. I'll see you later.